Okay. Football media good. days for the Big Ten follows next week, starting Tuesday. Right. What, what day is Indiana? Thursday? They are Thursday. Right. With, like, there's a couple new Big Ten newbies in there with them in there, Oregon and somebody else maybe? Uh, I think Oregon and possibly USC uh, on can, Thursday. We can go introduce ourselves to Dan Lanning. <laughs> exactly, and say, are you going to be here next year? <laughs> Well, next year I would think I you would play Oregon. Well, not either. not Dan not Dan Lanning. My bad. I was thinking of uh, Lincoln Riley. I oh. apologize. Indiana uh, got UCLA and Washington this year, so I would imagine next year they'll get Oregon and USC. So they got a break. They better take advantage of it this year because Oregon and USC are the better teams. Absolutely. Thursday we'll have Indiana uh, up first with head coach Kurt Signetti, Justin Ellison, Aiden Fisher, and Mike Kadick. Uh, along with them as their players, Maryland, Michigan, new head coach Sharon Moore uh, will be appearing. P.J. Fleck from Minnesota, Dan Lanning of Oregon, new uh, Washington coach Jed Fish, who moved up from uh, Arizona, uh, will be there. So uh, uh, new coach, new coach, and new coach. So Sharon three out of Moore. six. New coaches. Sharon, Sharon Moore was a former Charlie Strong, uh, either assistant coach or graduate assistant at Louisville. Yeah, how'd that go for him? Uh, it went well. That's when Charlie Strong was here and did really well. I, I don't think he went with him to Texas. I think he, he just when he was here, he was an assistant. And I that wonder why, because that was a big jump at uh, when when Charlie Strong left to go to Texas. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't even know what Charlie's doing anymore. He was with. Nick Saban last year, but now that Saban's out of the game, he's obviously not. But I, I'm probably going to come up on Thursday. Uh, what time is Signetti talk? Do you know that? He would be, I, according to this, now he's listed as first. I don't know that they go in alphabetical order, but I think that they do. Okay. And I think that he'll be up first. So like 10 um, o'clock or something? Yeah, no later than that, I would not imagine. Let's see. Each day will include six, the, all six schools. Uh, the program's head coaches and three of the student athletes. There will be live coverage of the media starts at 11 Eastern. So with it spread out, maybe they're not starting quite as early okay. as they have been in the past, which is nice and those are, because those are two James Madison guys. And then Kadich is a fifth year guy, right? So yeah, he's an offensive lineman and uh, Indiana, uh, man, I feel like I'm drinking the Kool-Aid on Indiana football, Rick. Uh, mm -hmm. Partly, you know, I look at the schedule, and I'm like, okay. And I know what Indiana has, is doing. I, I don't think that's the one thing. I, I know that most people look at Indiana and say, well, it's Indiana, which I understand. That's understandable. But what they, I don't think a lot of people realize is, yeah, they have not brought in a ton of these big-name transfers from as far as coming from these big schools. But the guys that they're getting, even if they're coming from James Madison or wherever, very highly rated by pro football focus. Uh, Indiana's receiving core is, by, 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 by that metrics, the best in the Big Ten right now. Their secondary is one of the best in the Big Ten right now. You've got a solid, experienced quarterback in, uh, in, in Curtis Rourke and a solid backup their running backs room is highly rated how their offensive line definitely improved i'm not gonna say it's highly rated but it's definitely improved under bob bostat and since he's the only guy that kurt signetti kept that says a lot to me um and they just they landed those three three out of the top 10 defensive transfers per uh pro football focus so there's just so much positive. It's hard not to be positive about this potential season for the, for the Hoosiers. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. They've done nearly everything. Well, it seems like um, <clears throat> they've got a plan. That's the first and most important thing. Uh, it seems like they have a certain way they want to attack things. And their plan is <clears throat> we'd rather take guys who are moving up <clears throat> from a lower level FBS school or even from an FCS school who have proven producers at that level uh, and see what they can do at the Big Ten 
Then previously, uh, what Tom Allen did, he took a lot of guys who were from other Power Five schools who weren't successful there. And I'm not, there was that Miles Jackson kid from UCLA. He came in, didn't do much. There was the linebacker Casey from uh, Louisville that came in. He didn't do much. Now, there were a few guys that hit. Uh, they had a number of transfers that did okay, but they had a lot of guys, I think, who they had uh, higher recruiting rankings and didn't pan out at their first school, and they took him. <clears throat> and that's not what Signetti's going to do. He does, he, as he said in his opening press conference, you know, he doesn't worry about that stuff. He he goes by what he believes. Um, so, and another reason I think people are on board is uh, they do have eight home games, which is that's the most you can have. Uh, that's a big advantage. They took Louisville off the schedule and scheduled a win against Western Illinois. That's another advantage they have. And in addition to what we see on the field, you see signs that the administration is taking football more seriously by being out there talking about the changes they're making to the game day experience to try and get more people excited about football and get people in the stadium to create an atmosphere, which I think is critical. I mean, one, financially, they need people to come to the games for the money, and B, it's critical if you're trying to get recruits to come in the future to bring them into a stadium where there's 45 to 50,000 people, as opposed to often there being 25,000 people, I think would make a difference. Absolutely. Because Indiana is still, even though they're making these moves to the stadium, there's still so much that has to be done yeah. to, to bring it up to uh, a modern yeah, big 10 standards. They're one of the last to not have a uh, uh, sky boxes, a full length of the stadium, yep. uh, uh, the press box. We, we call it a press box, but actually the press is probably the least used of those large things. It's 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 sweet. It's the same. Uh, I mean, that press box is the original press box from the stadium. I mean, it hasn't been renovated or upgraded in har hardly any way since when? The, the early 60s when that place was opened? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've been in it. I mean, do you see any signs that they've done anything in that? Pr and that's not, we're, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying that the people who are responsible for the state of the program were, were the athletic directors and the administrators in the 1980s, the 1990s, and the early 2000s, when other schools were more proactive and more aggressive and figured it out that football and only football is what counted more than anything else and said it's time for Indiana to quit looking at football as an afterthought. Uh, they were asleep at the switch. And now they're so far behind that this is what they can do now, but they definitely need to have a five or a 10 year plan of saying, okay, here's what has to happen in the next five years and putting in seating and making the game day experience uh, uh, something that will attract fans has to be high on the list. Because if you only are counting on people to come to games because you're going to win, that's a bad strategy. You you have to you have to get people to come. I want to go down there because I had a good time. I want to go down there because I saw my friends. I want to go down there because I saw the fireworks or I like the band or I like the way the players ran on the field or whatever. You've got to get more of those kind of people in the facility. Yeah, and once you do and you add winning to that, that yeah. is the magic formula. And For sure. I, I think Indiana's on in that on that path, of course, they, they are, have not taken a just snap so late. Kurt I mean, everybody it, else is 50 yards down the field, Jim. The, the cost and the cost is uh, going to be substantially higher because of their late. Yeah. And you play the long game. I mean, you got to get kids to come to games and say, dad, take me back. I like going there. Uh, you know, that was fun. Can we do it again? Uh, and then they do it. And then they, when they get older, they enjoyed it and say, I want to have football season tickets and take their kids. I mean, that you got to create a fan base. I mean, we joke about it. It's, it's changed quite a bit and gotten better, but you know, we're not that far removed from when the, when the scouting report in Indiana was great tailgate, pretty good crowd for the first quarter, decent crowd for the second quarter. Where did everybody go at halftime? Right. <laughs> Uh, absolutely, uh, especially because the students usually make up a, a bulk of, uh, of those that are in attendance, and they traditionally leave at halftime. And, right, but uh, they've done. I'll give them credit. I I really believe under Scott Dolson and Fred Glass, they've done a better job of getting more students to come to the games. 
uh, the student section has been larger and more invested in the team. And I think the student section, uh, if you give them just a sniff of a successful program, they will turn out. Uh, that's what I think. I, I agree because uh, when you start winning, it just, it's fun. Winning is fun for everybody. Yeah, it is. And it carries over. And then you start having a little bit of pride. Uh, and then you're like, Hey, we've got a shot at beating Michigan or, or whomever a bigger name opponent is, uh, the you add TV or to that. Yes. Washington. Uh, exactly. If you could beat and Washington this year, Washington was in the national championship game last year. I mean, I don't care that they lost all their players and their coaches. It's still Washington. If you yep. can beat Washington, that's, that's a, that's a card you can play in recruiting and you can get people excited about your program. See, I, I didn't even think of it that way. I, I knew that they're sitting here, they're playing Washington as one of those high market te value teams, but I didn't even think about it from that standpoint. And that is, you are right. Uh, it, it's just another, and if they could, what happens if they beat Nebraska the week before that on top of it? Now you've added two blue chip wins uh, to your season, including one over, like you said, that played in the national championship game last year. If you win those two, you're going to a bowl game because there's enough other winnable games on your schedule that you're going to go to a bowl game. And then, you know, who knows? You go to a bowl game and actually win the bowl game for the first time in 30 years. Now you're really getting some buzz going. So th there's plenty of opportunity with this team. Um, you know, as there is with any coach, there's a honeymoon period. People are buying into what they're thinking. But I think in this case, I think that it's more uh, – it's a little safer believing because this guy is – has won in other places as a head coach. Uh, he's said what he's going to do, and he's done that so far. So now let's just see what he does on the field. And I think, I think he'll be good uh, at media day. He 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 knows the message he wants to communicate when he's in front of a microphone. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Thank you for enjoying our content and videos. And make sure you hit that subscribe and notifications toggle so you don't miss out on anything, whether it's Indiana Hoosiers, the Boilers, the Colts, the Pacers, Indiana High School action, whatever is happening in sports, we're trying to bring it all to you. And make sure you don't miss out on a thing. Again, hit the subscribe button for us. Helps us out a ton. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much.